Good day. My name is Sheldon Carter, and I'm the Utilities Manager at the International Seabed Authority. Our presentation today is titled Deep Data Platform for Sharing Environmental Data. During this presentation, I'll present to you seven agenda items. We will begin with a brief background on the Deep Data database. This will be followed by an introduction to the strategic direction specifically related to marine scientific research. Then I'll present to you the five pillars on which the data management strategy is developed, namely identification, storage, provisioning, integration, and governance. Let us begin. Deep data was launched during the 25th session of the International Seabed Authority and marked the delivery of the ISA's first online database giving public access to environmental data. We will now look at strategic direction number four to promote and encourage marine scientific research in the area. There are five items under this strategic direction. I've highlighted the main points of each and will briefly go through them with you. To promote and encourage marine scientific research in the area, emphasis on environmental effect. Strategic direction number two, disseminate results of research and analysis. Strategic direction number three, to establish strategic alliances and partnerships with agencies such as IOC UNESCO, IHO, and to share data and information in an open and transparent manner, benefiting from the synergies and addressing the knowledge gaps where they exist. Strategic direction number four deals with engaging the international scientific community to promote access to non-confidential information and data related to the marine environment. Strategic direction number five compiles summaries, environmental baseline data, and assess the environmental implications of activities in the area. But before we can start sharing data, we first need to consider what is the data that's related to what we're doing. We need to identify the data. This begins with our reporting templates. Most of you would be familiar with the reporting templates that ISA has issued to contractors. Now for these reporting templates, we gather information on scientific areas such as the physical and chemical oceanography, the biogeochemistry of the area, the biological communities and the ecosystems. Having gathered the relevant data related to marine scientific research, we then need to evaluate the metadata. Metadata is data about data. This handles the collection of the data, who collected it, when was it collected, where was it collected. Then we look at the storage of the data. How do I best or more most appropriately store this data so that it can be easily retrieved during the data retrieval process. How can I find the data? How can I search data? How do I archive data appropriately? And how do I group data where necessary? Having identified the data, the question is, now what? What do we do next? We move into data storage. If you recall the highlighted areas before, one of them was promoting access to non-confidential information and data. For this, deep data stores the environmental data and makes it available online to everyone. In the past, what we had was a situation where environmental data was available and persons would have had to send a written request to the secretariat following which a data dump would have been created and then this dump is transferred to the requester, and that is how data would have been made available. What we have now is the utilization of technology to make all this data available and readily accessible by anyone once they are interested in it. Then we look at disseminating the results of research and analysis. An example of this is the fact that deep data stores structured and unstructured data. So not only can you get a combined version of the results and you're able to get a high level picture of the data set by downloading 
data across multiple contractors. You're also able to download unstructured data such as workshop reports. You're able to download raw files. And also you're able to download process data, which then leads to information and gives us knowledge of the area. Provisioning. This is the sharing of data between organizations. So for this, we see where the strategic directions spoke to the sharing of data and information in an open and transparent manner. An example of this would have been our collaboration with agencies such as IOC, UNESCO, and other UN agencies. Then we have the mapping and conversion of deep data as biodiversity data to the Darwin Core Standard. This will, en will enable the biodiversity data stored in deep data to be easily transferred or incorporated into other such databases. Next, we look at the integration of data and benefiting from the synergies. A good example is where we validate the taxonomic information provided by contractors in a reporting template against the WORMS database. What we do here, for instance, is that we can retrieve associated APIDs once we have valid matches. The next step, or another step to this, is where, for instance, we could utilize, use this API ID to then search other genetic database. An example of this would be, for instance, GeneBank. So the contractors would have been providing taxonomic data, relevant taxonomic information. We pull the API ID from, let's say, a worms database. And then we can utilize that API ID to find the genetic data related to that species that was identified. I think that then creates the scenario where we no longer need to duplicate the storage of the genetic data within the deep data database. And finally, we look at data governance. Now, this is a major component of the data management strategy and encompass all the rules that, that govern how we identify data, how we store data, how we provision data, how we integrate with other systems and how we manage data. It deals with the life cycle and how all data comes in. The question that we need to consider in relation to marine scientific research is what policies are necessary to ensure the effective use of marine scientific research data and to also ensure that the usage of the data is ethical scientifically. And also, how do we maintain the highest level of data quality as we move forward?